Hey everyone, Happy097 here, and today we are going to be doing a Mecha Bricks tutorial. Now, I didn't plan this out, and I probably should have, I'll regret it later. Right now, we have more important work to do, like getting onto this. So, I'm just going to show you a basic tutorial on how to make and render a Lego minifigure. So, we'll actually do a Nexo Knights. I've never done one of those before. Mistake on my part, I know. But fairly large collection. I actually have a few of the sets, so... Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm intelligent. Anyways, we'll get out this piece. Now, I can't tell, but it seems to me like I should choose something I know better. <laughs> Sorry, it's a surprise, I know, but... What shall we do instead? Hidden side, that's easy. So I, I do a lot of mecha bricks, but I just don't want to take the risk. Sorry. And so, first off, I need to explain to you here. Now, certain controls. The two up on top here, you'll see me switching between them. Uh, oops. Didn't mean to hit that. I'm on an iPad, so it makes it slightly more difficult. But these are two controls. The one that's blue right now is the one I'm on. This allows you to move things up the Y axis. And I can't really, I never remember what this one is. Well, it's either the X axis or the Z axis, and the other is whatever the other one isn't. I never remember, and it doesn't really matter unless you're going into the move section, which you see over on the right. Underneath the graph section, there's object transform and move. On move, there's translation and rotation. We'll get to that soon. But there's Y, X, and Z axis. Put a value in, say 1, and it'll move in that direction. You can also put negative numbers and vice versa, you know. So now we know the red is X axis, blue is Z axis, green is Y axis. I'll try to remember that, but knowing me, I won't. So... Then there's this, which, same axis and all, but you can turn things whichever direction you want. Now, we're making Jack right now. Which, if you know Hidden Side, for all of his big talk, Jack's just a big scaredy- oh, I messed this up. There's the back button, thankfully. And so we'll use that to get Jack to this. Personally, I don't know what I want to do with the legs, so we'll move on to the upper parts. Go over to Hidden Side, and find the torso you want to use. There's arrows to move up and down, and all you really need to do is just tap on the one you want. I want this, so we'll use that. Yeah. Alright. Let's zoom in and out using two fingers. One finger does this, and three fingers does this. Don't try to use two fingers to move around like this. It just won't work. Trust me on this. So, now we're going to show off a new skill. I haven't actually messed with all of these. I've only used multiple because it's the only one I really needed. And trust me, I can show you later, but... I've made some pretty cool designs just only using those tools. At least the ones that I'm going to show in this video. Now, I will say I'm no master at this tool. But fairly decent, and I think that makes me decent enough to make a video on it. Wouldn't you agree? Now we're going to move on. Accessories and accessories in hand are very different things. Accessories is where you will find all this stuff. And yes, the technical term for it is stuff. So, I'm going to go ahead and and 
move these points are where the item will spawn in. It's very useful when you want to put stuff in certain places. Doesn't mean you can't move it to that certain place. It's just often a lot easier to just do something like this. Here's your color palette, by the way, down here. I'm go to solid, and we're going to want legacy on. Because, as you see, it's a very tricky color. But not impossible to obtain. Because you see straight up white won't cut it. See the difference? It's subtle, but it's there, so you want the exact color. So now we're gonna go over to heads. And you'll notice everything has a subsection. So if I go to hidden side, see how that T next to this section lights up? That means you can hit back. It doesn't necessarily mean you need to hit back especially if you're already on the section you needed to be on. So bring up this and we're going to use the turn tool to turn it around to get the face. Now if you're concerned about a face being too big or too small, anything like that, that'll be fixed in the next set part of this segment. I'll show you that in a bit. First, I want to go off to hair though and get this guy some proper hair. Now the only reason I'm not doing the actual version from the set is I want to show off how you can do virtually whatever you want on here. Doesn't matter if it's existed or not. As you can see with the arms, no minifigure has arms that go straight to the torso. Just it, it doesn't exist. Now often hairs do spawn in backwards like that. We don't want that, we'll just move it around as necessary. <sighs> Honestly choosing the color for this is very tricky. Because, like I said, it's not a piece that exists. You have to inference based on the eyebrows. And the eyebrows say this is the correct color. Now, you can mess with the hands again. Because it just, something about it doesn't look right. So, poop, I messed that up. So, I'll switch back. Just like that. And I think we're actually going to want to move this outwards a little. Ooh, that's a bit too much. Red is X, if I'm correct, or already on the right one. We'll just go one. Yep. And there we go. And we'll hit the back button just so we can get that automatically redone. I want to actually do the Z axis just for a second here. Yeah, there we go. That actually looks a lot better. So... X, one. Ooh, that's the wrong one. Oh, that's because I. So I'll do negative one to reverse that. I accidentally hit the hand first, which sets up the reference point at the wrong spot. Important thing to know you want the reference spot in the right spot, or else it'll never work. There we go. second Sorry about that. I am, I am back. Sorry about that. And you see, this has set something up differently. We actually need to do a negative one because of how that arrow is pointing. Negative one sets it down, and now we have a halfway decent picture. Now, what is Jack scared of? I'll leave that up to your imagination. I mean, after all, we know Jack is never scared of anything, so this must be something horrifying. Also, I'm using a hidden side character because that wave's about to end, and I'm super sad. So, 
<laughs> Moving on, there's a little design thing up here in the top right, no, top left hand corner. Oh, can't get my left and right straight. What's wrong with me? Let me see, 3D rendering. It'll want to add a camera. That's why I actually posed it beforehand so that it's now, you see, there's the camera. You can edit the camera angle if need be, but it's best to just have it already set up, focused on what you want it to focus on. I can't get back into the exact camera position, I guarantee it. So we're just going to mess around. We can do whatever angle we want to look at. It's not going to matter. Now you're going to want to add a floor here in the floor section. Circle, backdrop, color. Seizure warnings. Oh, I just realized if you actually look at the color thing, it looks like a rainbow. That's cool. Either way, we are going to choose a dark purple. Not purple. Blue. I can't even get my colors straight. But just for the hidden side, because that's technically what Jack is in this form. And I'm tired of talking like this, so let's change over to lighting. And this is all your lighting. And you'll see each one drastically changes how it looks. This one's my personal favorite just because it's always going to look like this. It doesn't matter what background you have. It's always going to look like this. I don't care what you do. Be bright pink for all you want. So, for the lighting of the hidden side, it's often a very hard one to figure out. It really is. So, I kind of want something that's dark. Oh, yeah. That's it. That's perfect right there. So it doesn't matter if you do pen, pen G, JPEG, OpenXR. You can't do it unless you buy something, I think. So it doesn't matter what you do. Do it whatever you want. Full global illumination. I still don't know what that does. I've turned it on before and I don't know. So. Render. Looks like Jack's not going to get rendered today. That's unfortunate. And uh, I'm sorry you guys ended up having to see that. So I'll just skip over to saving. File. Save or save as. Doesn't matter what you want to do. Alright. Access path. Whatever your account is. And save. It'll save it so you can return to it at any point in time. So yeah. By the way, the backdrop does appear in the actual model itself. I don't think you can move it or anything. Sorry about that. But, you know. It's there. And so, because I can't actually show you the rendering... I've shown you the steps to get there, but I can't actually render something, right? Think again. I've made ten renders today, as it said there, clearly. So I'll just show you one of my ten renders. And you can see how very realistic this looks, despite obviously not being realistic. And so, there is your quick guide on how to make and render a project in Mechabricks. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all later. Oh, also, this is filler because I wasn't able to record um, audio for the next um, Night of the Tinkerer. Speaking of which, if you haven't watched that on my channel, I'm doing a current Ninjago fan series called... Ninjago Night of the Tinker. As it stands right now, it could be entirely canon. Because it doesn't interfere with the main characters, even. But it will eventually, so... <laughs> it's just something interesting that came out of my brain box, and I decided I wanted to share with you all, so... Go watch that. Enjoy it. And, yeah. Either way, thank you so much for watching this... Oh, boy.
Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Happy